This video is about the Friedman test. And we start right away with the first question, what is the Friedman test? The Friedman test analyzes whether there are statistically significant differences between three or more dependent samples. What is a dependent sample again? In a dependent sample, the measured values are linked. For example, if a sample is drawn of people who have knee surgery and these people are interviewed before the surgery and one and two weeks after the surgery, it is a dependent sample. This is the case because the same person was interviewed at multiple time points. Now you might rightly say that the analysis of variance with repeated measures tests exactly the same thing, since it also tests whether there is a difference between three or more dependent samples. That is correct. The Friedman test is the non-parametric counterpart of the analysis of variance with repeated measures. But what is the difference between the two tests? The analysis of variance tests the extent to which the measured values of the dependent sample differ. In the Friedman test, on the other hand, it is not the actual measured values that are used, but the ranks. The time where a person has the highest value gets rank 1, the time with the second highest value gets rank 2, and the time with the smallest value gets rank 3. This is now done for all people or for all rows. Afterwards, the ranks of the single points of time are added up. At the first time point, we get a sum of 7. At the second time point, we get a sum of 8. And at the third time point, we get a sum of 9. Now we can check how much these rank sums differ from each other. But why are rank sums used? The big advantage is that if you don't look at the mean differences but at the rank sum, the data doesn't have to be normally distributed. To put it simple, if your data are normally distributed, parametric tests are used. For more than two dependent samples, this is the analysis of variance with repeated measures. If your data are not normally distributed, non-parametric tests are used. For more than two dependent samples, this is the Friedman test. This leads us to the research question that you can answer with the Friedman test. Is there a significant difference between more than two dependent groups? Let's have a look at that with an example. You might be interested to know whether therapy after a slipped disc has an influence on the patient's perception of pain. For this purpose, you measure the pain perception before the therapy, in the middle of the therapy and at the end of the therapy. Now you want to know if there is a difference between the different times. So your independent variable is time or therapy progressing over time. Your dependent variable is the pain perception. You now have a history of the pain perception of each person over time. And now you want to know whether the therapy has an influence on the pain perception. Simplified, in this case, the therapy has an influence. And in that case, the therapy has no influence on the pain perception. In the course of time, the pain perception does not change here. In this case, it does. Now we also have a good transition to the hypotheses. In the Friedman test, the null hypothesis is, there are no significant differences between the dependent groups. And the alternative hypothesis is, there is a significant difference between the dependent groups. Of course, as already mentioned, the Friedman test does not use the true values, but the ranks. We will go through the formula behind the Friedman test in a moment. This brings us to the point of how to calculate the Friedman test. For the calculation of the Friedman test, you can of course simply use DataTab or calculate it by hand. To be honest, hardly anyone will calculate the Friedman test by hand, but it will help you to understand how the Friedman test works and don't worry, it's not that complicated. 
First, I will show you how to calculate the Friedman test with DataTab, and then I will show you how to do it by hand. In order to do this, simply go to datadep.net and copy your own data into this table. Let's say you want to investigate whether there is a difference in the response time of people in the morning, at noon and in the evening. We simply click on this tab. Under this tab, you will find many hypothesis tests and DataTab will automatically suggest an appropriate test. If we click on all three variables, morning, noon and evening, DataTab will automatically calculate an analysis of variance with repeated measures. But in our case, we want to calculate the non-parametric test, so we click here. Now we get the results for the Friedman test. Up here, you can read the descriptive statistics and down here, you can find the p-value. If you don't know exactly how to interpret the p-value, you can just read the interpretation in words down here. A Friedman test showed that there is no significant difference between the variables chi-square equals 2.57, p equals 0.276. If your p-value is greater than your set significance level, then your null hypothesis is retained. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the groups. Usually a significance level of 0.05 is used, so this p-value is greater than 0.05. Additionally, DataTab gives you the post hoc test. If your p-value is smaller than 0.05, the post hoc test helps you to examine which of the groups really differ. So now let's look at what the equation behind the Friedman test are and recalculate this example by hand. Here we have the measured values of the seven people. In the first step, we have to assign ranks to the values. In order to do this, we look at each row separately. In the first row, which is the first person, 45 is the largest value. This gets rank one, then comes 36 with rank two and 34 with rank three. We do the same for the second row. Here, 36 is the largest value and gets rank 1. Then comes 33 with rank 2 and 31 with rank 3. Now we do this for each row, so for all people. Afterwards, we can calculate the rank sum for each point in time. For example, we just sum up all ranks at one point in time. In the morning, we get 17, at noon, 11, and in the evening, 14. If there were no differences between the different time points in terms of reaction time, we would expect the expected value at all time points. The expected value is obtained with this formula. And in this case, it is 14. So if there is no difference between morning, noon and evening, we would actually expect a rank sum of 14 at all three time points. Next, we can calculate the chi-square value. We get it with this formula. N is the number of people, which is seven. K is the number of time points, so three. And the sum of R squared is 17 squared plus 11 squared plus 14 squared. So we get a chi-square value of 2.57. Now we need the number of degrees of freedom. This is given by the number of time points minus one, so in our case, two. Finally, we can read the critical chi-square value in the table of critical chi-square values. For this, we take the predefined significance level, let's say it is 0.05, and the number of degrees of freedom. Here we can read that the critical chi-square value is 5.99. This is greater than our calculated value. Therefore, the null hypothesis is not rejected, and based on these data, there is no difference between the responsiveness at the different time points. 
Therefore, the null hypothesis is not rejected and based on these data, there is no difference between the responsiveness at the different time points. If the calculated chi-square value was greater than the critical one, we would reject the null hypothesis. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.